Uh, we are very excited to announce our uh, latest web app, uh, Webio Store. Uh, Store is our new uh, front of house POS built on the power of PIMS with a modern, uh, simplified web based UI. Uh, this webinar will be composed of three parts. First, I'll take you through a quick journey of Wevio software, how we got to Wevio store, and why we think it's just the app you need. Secondly, Chris Alley, or as we call him, Mr. GSX, will take us through a demo of store. If you're using PIMS now, you've already seen Chris's handiwork. Chris was the key liaison between Executron and the new GSX API team, and the primary reason PIMS is more integrated with GSX than any other service software out there. Finally, I'll come back for Q&A, pricing, and next steps. As we're going through this, put any questions you have in the chat, and we'll address them. My goal is to be wrapped up in about 45 minutes. Our goal with Store was to give our employees a simple and streamlined UI so that they could sell stuff and check in service devices with very little training. Our front of house employees tended to be where we experienced the highest turnover rate. So it was important for us to make brand new employees competent and profitable as soon as possible. We just didn't have the time to keep training new people with what can be complicated front of house procedures. Having software which guides them through the sales process, and more importantly, through all of the steps required to check in devices for Apple authorized service was critical. Because store is built on the power of PIMS, you still have all of the features and benefits that PIMS users have relied on for 30 years. It's just that now you don't have to wait for the front of house employees to be PIMS power users or GSX wizards before they can start engaging with customers. Store also serves as the central hub for our family of Webio apps, which some of you are already using. All of our apps are designed with one value in mind. How can we offer a simplified and streamlined experience for both our customers and our employees. Our answer was to automate everything. Before I started the Webio software division of the Mac experience, we were struggling with many of the manual processes some of you are struggling with now, keeping customers updated on the status of their orders and SROs, collecting customer payments, managing GSX appointments, etc. The problem, of course, with any manual process is that they're rarely carried out consistently between various employees if they even remember to do them at all. Our solution again, automate everything. And by everything, I mean everything from the time the customer decides to engage with us to the time that they complete their transaction. As we looked at ways we could automate our customer's experience, we realized that our customers often started their journey with us before they even entered the store. We created GSX Notifier to engage with those customers who scheduled appointments with us through Apple's appointment scheduler. GSX Notifier monitors Apple scheduler and notifies us when customers have made appointments. It also automatically sends an email to the customer with our customized content, allowing us to manage the customer's expectations by providing them with information we choose. While GSX Notifier addresses the needs of those customers who schedule appointments through Apple, we quickly saw that we needed something else. At first, we directed customers from our website to go to Apple's website to schedule their appointments. But we soon realized that we didn't really want our customers to go to Apple's website. For one thing, it's not a simple process. Secondly, there's a good chance that once they get there, they'll schedule their appointment with Apple Retail or one of our competitors. And third, Apple Scheduler only allows for scheduling Apple appointments, obviously. So there was no way for our customers to make non-GSX appointments. So we developed Webio Scheduler, which from your website lets your customers 
schedule both GSX and non-GSX appointments. Uh, and because it syncs with Apple Scheduler, you don't have to worry about getting double booked. Now that we had streamlined and simplified our customer's journey before coming to our store, we turned our attention to their experience upon arriving at the store. WeVOQ is our in-store queuing app, which lets your customers check in so that they have the confidence that they will be taken care of in turn without forcing them to stand in line. Q integrates with both Apple's appointment scheduler and WeVO scheduler, so those customers who took the time to make appointments can take priority over walk-ins. We originally created Q to let our customers check themselves in, but because of COVID modified that to an employee guided check-in. As such, we have integrated Q into our newest app, WeVO Store, which Chris is going to demo, demo for you in a few minutes. Finally, focusing on our customer's journey, we look to simplifying and streamlining the customer's experience after we decided to do business, after they decided to do business with us. We developed the customer portal to give customers online access uh, to all of their orders and SROs. From the customer portal, they can review and put down payments on quotes, review and track shipments of sales orders, review and pay open invoices, and review SRO statuses and place deposit on open repairs. Giving our customers this level of on-demand access without requiring employee interaction has made for happier, more informed, and more satisfied customers. Okay, that gives you the how and why we got to WeVO Store. Simplifying and streamlining the customer's journey sets you up for having satisfied customers. And simplifying and streamlining your employees' experience sets you up for having confident and profitable employees. Now, I'm going to turn this over to Chris so that uh, he can do the store demo. He'll be using a combination of live and recorded material, but he can go over that when he gets there. I'll be back later for Q&A, Q &A, pricing, and next steps. Chris? Thanks, Joel. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen, get right into the demo here. In one of your Zoom windows, there should be a reactions button with a little smiley face icon on it. If you can see my screen, just go ahead and click that and give me that thumbs up reaction. Awesome, lots of thumbs up. That's what I wanted, great. All right, so as we move through the demo, you'll almost certainly come up with some questions about the software. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time and stay on task. So as you have questions, just drop them into the chat. Josh and Joel are gonna be watching that. And at the end, we'll take some time to answer some of those. So what you see here is Webio Store. We have several sections over here on the left, queue, orders, SROs, customers, and some settings and integrations. All the data you see in these listings is being pulled live from our PIMS server. If I create an order or an SRO in PIMS, that will show up simultaneously in WeVO Store. And if I create one in WeVO Store, you'll see that show up here, or you'll see that show up back in PIMS as well, because WeVO Store talks directly to our live PIM server. I wanna start with showing you how to process an order. To do so, I'm just gonna click over to orders here in the navigation, where I can see all my existing orders. And once again, this listing is coming directly from PIMS. Any order created in PIMS, I can see here, and any order I create using WeVO Store will also be in PIMS. But I'm not interested in these orders right now because I wanna make a new order. So to do that, I'm just gonna click new order. So now that I have my order screen, I'm gonna add the customer's info here. We always start by performing a search to make sure we don't add a customer record that already exists. I can search for the customer by name or email
For time's sake, I'm just going to use an existing customer. But if I needed to, I could easily add a customer with the Add New Customer button. If I find the customer I'm looking for, I can just click Use next to their name, and they're added to the order. I'm going to go ahead and set this order type to Invoice. But as you can see, we support all the order types that already exist in PIMS. Now that I have everything filled out at the top there, I'm going to go ahead and add the items the customer is purchasing. I can do that by scanning or keying in the part code of the item, or if I need to, I can search for the item by name or keyword. For this example, let's say that the customer has decided to purchase a MacBook Pro from us. I'm going to scan the part code in, and Webio Store sees that this item requires a serial number and is eligible for Apple Care. So it's going to prompt me to scan the serial number and choose whether I want to add Apple Care for this device. Once I scan the serial number, it's going to compare it against the list of available serial numbers and PIMs and tell me if I have a match. This one matches, so we know it's valid and available. So I'm just going to click Assign and Load Apple Care. And that serial number is added to the line. And you can see that Wevio automatically adds the Apple Care line item as well. And let's say that the customer would like to get a case to go with their Mac, but we don't have the color that they want in stock. I'm going to go ahead and search for case. And it's going to list all the items that contain case in their description. This is the one the customer wants, but I can see that I don't have any currently. I can always order one though, so I'm just going to go ahead and add this to the line. And now Weavio Store is forcing me to deal with the fact that I don't have this in stock. Since I'm selling one and I don't have any, Weavio Store wants to tell me how many were fulfilled and how many I need to back order. If my inventory account just so happens to be wrong, I, and I do physically have this on hand, I can tell Weavio that, and it will let me proceed with the sale. I don't actually have any of this item, so I'm going to tell Weavio Store that this is back ordered. And now that the math makes sense, zero fulfilled plus one back ordered equals a total quantity of one, I can add this to the order. I can see that it's back ordered. And once I save this invoice, PIMS automated purchasing is going to let our purchaser know that we need to get this ordered for the customer. At this point, we've added everything that the customer plans to purchase to this order. So I'm going to go down here and click the payment button at the bottom of the order screen. Wevio Store will automatically put the total on the credit card reader's screen. And if the customer is paying with a card, they can just go ahead and tap or insert their card and follow the prompts to complete their payment. If they're paying with cash or another form of payment, they can use one of these buttons down here. I'm going to choose cash for this transaction and enter the amount tendered. Wevio Store displays the change that I owe to the customer. I click complete, and the payment's been collected. Now that payment's all squared away, I can email or print a receipt for the customer by clicking the appropriate button and following the prompts to do so. As you can see, that was very easy to use. There aren't a ton of fields and buttons all over the screen to overwhelm users. It was easy to find the items we wanted to add to the order. I didn't have to spend a ton of time searching inventory records to find those items that I wanted. We designed this to be easy to learn so employees with minimal experience can be trained and become profitable quickly. And we designed this to be easy to use so that employees can focus on engaging with the customer standing in front of them instead of being distracted and glued to a screen trying to build an order. Next, let's take a look at the queue and checking in customers for service. For this part of the demonstration, I'll be using recorded video. Apple doesn't currently have a test system online, so we have to use production servers for this. Because this is a production system, you'll see some sections of the window blurred out to protect customer privacy. Here, I have a listing of appointments that customers have made. These are a mixture of GSX reservations and our own custom appointments. We have another application called Appointment Scheduler that enables you to pull in reservations from GSX, give customers a way to schedule GSX reservations with you directly on your website, and create your own non-Apple custom appointments for things like one-to-one -one training sessions and sales consultations. That's outside the scope of this demo, but know that we have that integration, which complements this queuing system in Wevio Store. 
If you choose not to use appointment scheduler, you can still use the queue to manage your traffic as customers walk in. To place someone in the line, you just click add to queue, put in a little information about the customer, and answer any custom questions that you have set up down here. These questions are customizable and allow you to collect any additional information that you might wanna gather from the customer. And once that's done, I simply click add to queue. They're dropped in line and whoever's working at the service desk will be able to see who's waiting and in what order the customers arrive with a priority given to those customers who scheduled appointments. If I'm working at the service counter, I'm just gonna click on the next customer and call them forward. I'm taking back to the same screen we saw when we first checked the customer in. I can review this information with the customer and edit as needed. And if we determine that the customer needs to check in for service, I can continue right on into creating the SRO by clicking continue to SRO wizard. The first thing WeVO Store wants to know when we check in a device is whether we can run diagnostics. The software is gonna guide your front counter employee through that process. And once again, we've designed this to be easy to use. So someone who is in their first week should be able to do this by simply following the prompts. Is the display working? In this case it is. So I'm gonna click yes, continue. WeVO Store prompts me to find the device's serial number. I click continue put that serial number in and click continue again. WeVO Store reaches out to GSX to validate this serial number. If the serial number isn't found in GSX, we get an error. If it is found, we get to move on to the next step. So since the serial number is valid, WeVO Store is gonna have me run MRI on this device. I'm gonna click start diagnostics. And now WeVO Store is waiting for me to initiate diagnostics on the device. And as soon as the software sees the diagnostic start running, it will automatically move on to the next step while the diagnostic continues to run in the background. So while we're waiting for that diagnostic to finish, WeVO Store is gonna prompt us to make good use of our time by collecting the customer's information. The software is using the information we gave it when the customer checked in to see if we have any existing customer record matches. If I need to, I can perform a different search for a customer here, or if there aren't any matches, I can go ahead and create a new customer. For this scenario, I'm just gonna use an existing customer. WeVO Store prompts me to double check and update the customer's billing info. Once I'm confident that that's up to date, I can click continue. Next, I'm prompted to update the info for the customer's shipping address or location. And often the billing info and the shipping address are the same. So I can just click this use billing button and all the info I entered for billing is copied into the shipping pane. And finally, I'm prompted to fill in the information for the primary contact on this repair. This is useful if you're servicing a device for an organization such as a large company or a university and the person you'll be interacting with and seeking approval from is different from where the final bill will go or even where the equipment is located. However, more often than not, this is the same as the billing or shipping contact. So in that case, you can just click one of these buttons here to copy the information over from the previous panes. Now that I've collected all the customer's information, WeVO Store is gonna check back in on that diagnostic we were running. And it looks like that's done. So it displays those results for me. And once I've reviewed that, I can go check the warranty information for this device. This screen will display warranty status. If the customer has AppleCare Plus, the screen will display whether AppleCare incidents are available and will show the different tiers for damage and their respective prices. And when applicable, the screen will also show CS codes. I can see that this device has AppleCare, so I know how I should set customer expectations. And when I continue, WeVO Store checks the Find My status for this device, and we can see that Find My is on, so we need to have the customer turn that off. Once that's off, I can check the status again, and we have confirmation from GSX that it is, in fact, off. And because we performed all the necessary steps, WeVO Store will now allow us to finish this SRO. I'm taken to our newly created SRO with all the information that we just entered using the wizard. And if I need to go back and add or change something, I can do that in any field on the screen.
If I need to collect a deposit, I can do that here. It works in the same way that taking payments for orders does. I can print equipment tags to affix to the customer's equipment. And I can print a copy of the SRO for the customer to take with them. Now that this is done, this SRO exists in Webio store and in PIMS. It will make its way to the back of house where the techs will be able to create and manage this repair using the full GSX integration built right into PIMS. And that's it. Wevio Store walked us through every step of the process, making sure that we had the correct serial number, making sure diagnostics were on, making sure we had the correct customer info, making sure uh, that we had the warranty status, making sure that Find My was off. I didn't have to think about any of that or rely on some checklist in my head to make sure that I remembered everything. The software streamlined the process and did all of the thinking for me, which ultimately eliminates mistakes, saving the company money, and helping to maintain morale because now I don't have techs in the back of house complaining that the front counter employees keep forgetting to run diagnostics or they keep forgetting to turn off Find My. We designed this to be easy to learn and easy to use so that you can turn new hires into competent employees very quickly. And a competent employee is gonna be able to better engage with that customer standing right in front of them, which creates a positive experience for the customer and more profit for your company. We've experienced this firsthand. At one of our stores, we just hired a couple new front counter employees. And with minimal training and next to no exposure to PIMS, they were able to start checking customers in during their first week using Webio Store. This has cut our training time down significantly. So you may be wondering how you can get started and leverage the software in your own stores. I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Josh for a brief Q&A to answer some of your questions. And once we've answered those questions, we'll turn the presentation back over to Joel to talk about how you can get started along with a super awesome offer for those of you on the call today. All right, thanks, Chris. All right, so we got a couple questions coming in. Again, if you guys just wanna drop those questions into the chat, um, we'll make sure uh, they get answered uh, for you. So I'm gonna direct these first to Joel and then to Chris. Uh, so, Joel, if you want to unmute yourself there. Um, all right. So, quick question that came in. Can we add notes to an order? We saw how we could do that with a SRO. Can we do that with, a, with an order? Yeah. So, uh, you can do that a couple of different ways. Keep in mind that the order that you see in PIMS has, um, or the, the order that you see in store has all of the uh, availability of orders that you have in PIMS. And in PIMS, there's uh, sections for um, any kind of notes, notes that the customer can see, notes that the customer can't see. Um, a lot of times what we do is we just add a, uh, notes to a line item um, on the order without a part number. And that just gets carried over as a, um, you know, as, as a description. Um, you know, we could, put notes in like, hey, this customer wants the order drop shipped or uh, hold on to this until all of the product arrives. Any of those kinds of notes are, are um, fine that you can, you can add there. All right, what's next, Josh? Great. Um, so uh, Eric wants to know, is this, um, does this require an investment in PIMS first? We'll go over that um, here in just a second. So thanks for your question, Eric. Um, and then Dan wants to know, can we customize the check-in flow? We document specific amounts the customer has authorized at check-in. So can we customize the check-in flow? So the check-in flow is um, designed so that none of the steps are missed. Uh, Chris, you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, so there, there are elements that are customizable and there's elements that are fixed. So. Um, like at the beginning, uh, as we were checking in, there were those custom questions at the bottom. So if there are specific, you know, questions you want to collect from the customer, you can add as many or as few of those as you want. You can make them required or not required. So that is customizable. Um, so uh, as far as uh, documenting specific amounts, um, I mean, you could you'd always put that in the notes. Our front counter guys are pretty familiar with you know, if it's a broken screen, it's $29. If it's this, it's, you know, 
if it's out of warranty, we charge like $70 for a diagnostic fee. So those are so repetitive and standard that, that those guys don't need that. But yeah, there, there are elements here that are customizable um, that you can, you can change. Great. And uh, I think it's Jerry here wants to know, uh, do diagnostics have to be a part of the check-in flow? Uh, I mean, he's also curious about some of that customization. So, um, you know, I think we might need a little more information on exactly what you want customized. You can always um, drop a call into us. Um, we're going to uh, show you what next step is to do that. So if there's really specific customize or if you want to type in some more notes there, I can, we can address that. But uh, so, uh, the question I'll is, does diagnostics have to be a part of the check-in flow? So let me jump in here, Josh. Um, I, I know Chris went pretty quickly through that, um, that demo. Uh, one of the things that uh, you may have missed during the, uh, during the check-in process is on the screen letting you know that diagnostics are a need to be run, there is a button that lets you skip diagnostics. Um, we seriously discourage our employees from doing that because almost everything needs to have diagnostics. If they, if obviously you get a machine in that you can't write, run diagnostic, it won't power on that kind of stuff, then uh, they just click the button to skip diagnostics. Um, as far as the custom customization goes, um, you know, you can customize different questions that you need to have answered from your, um, you know, your front of house. Um, and like Josh said, we'll be happy to uh, to go over that with you uh, offline. Great. So that's all the questions we got for right now. Um, if any more come up, just drop that in the chat. Uh, Joel's going to go over uh, with this kind of next steps and, and how do we get going to to leverage uh, this this great software. So go go ahead, Joel. Okay. All right, you should be seeing my screen again. So, um, uh, as we just saw, WeVO Store uh, is designed to turn even the newest employees into confident employees. Uh, it is easy to use, easy to learn. Uh, it's designed by Apple service providers, us, for Apple service providers, you. Uh, it reduces training time. Uh, eliminates employee mistakes, keeps employees focused on customers, creating a better customer experience, faster repair uh, workflows. Uh, it cuts down on low morale and high turnover and ultimately saves you time and money. So what does it take to get store? This is gonna answer one of the questions that we had in the chat. Just to make sure that we're all on the same page, not all of the WeVO family of apps require PIMS. GSX Notifier, Scheduler, and Q can all be used without PIMS. WeVO Store and the Customer Portal both rely on the PIMS web module, so it would only be available to companies using PIMS. So if you're not currently using PIMS, we would need to set you up as a PIMS user. As you may or may not know, PIMS relies on the 4D database platform. If you've received a PIMS quote in the past, you know how complicated PIMS licensing uh, can be. We've got 4D servers here and PIMS servers there and 4D clients here and PIMS clients there. Do I buy the licenses outright or purchase via a lease or pay a monthly subscription? Do I get maintenance? Do I get no maintenance and so on? We can't get into all of that here, but we'll be happy to help you navigate through that process offline. In fact, we'll be announcing some pretty nice incentives at the end of the webinar for those of you interested in moving to PIMS in order to use Store. So whether you have PIMS or not, the first step is going to be to set up a call with us. We will work on building a custom solution tailored to your business. We are dropping the link in the chat now but you can also type this link in, uh, the link on your screen into your browser to schedule a call. Next, we set you up. 
migrate any data and train your employees. As you can see, if you have PIMS, it won't take long at all to get your store, to get Wevio store set up for you. And if you don't have PIMS, don't worry. We've been doing this for a long time and we'll make sure that your employees are set up to succeed. And third, just create profitable employees. Now, you, now that you have software that works specifically for your business, your empl employees are able to focus on selling and delivering great customer experience. Once you're up and running with PIMS, Wevio Store is just $49 per terminal per month. One key thing to know about Store um, is that the licensing for Store requires a PIMS client license, but does not need a 4D client license. Depending on the number of front of house terminals you need in your store, that could add up to a significant savings. What this meant for my store is that even though I never needed a fully functioning PIMS client for my front of house terminals, I was having to pay the same licensing fees that I was for my high end admin terminals in the back of house. The cost and maintenance of a 4D client license is $570 for the first year and $115 for every year after that. So with Wevio Store, not only do I get a simpler, cooler looking, streamlined UI, I'm not paying for 4D licenses I don't need. Putting Wevio Store on your front of house terminals starts out saving you $570 the first year an additional $115 every year after that on every front of house terminal. But there's more. First, to those of you not yet using PIMS, your first step needs to be to schedule a call with us so that we can show you all of the automated processes in PIMS designed specifically for Apple dealers. There's just way too much to cover in this webinar. We'll walk you through how PIMS will decrease overhead, boost productivity, and increase profitability. We'll look at your next steps and provide you with a set of options best suited for your situation. If you decide to take the PIMS plunge in the next 30 days, we're gonna make Wevio Store available to you at 50% off for the first year. But that's not all. As part of our onboarding of new PIMS customers, we offer both remote and on-site deployment and training. We are committed to setting up your employees to win through automation, which ultimately sets up your business to succeed. We're making that deployment and training available to you at 50% off as well. We all know how difficult it can be switching software, but we wanna make it as seamless as possible. But, that's not all. For the first seven stores that move to PIMS, I'm offering 20% off of your PIMS license costs and your 4D license costs. I'm happy selling those seven, I'm, I'm happy se selling those seven licenses to seven different companies or to one company with seven locations or any combination. So what that means for new PIMS users you get 50% off Wevio store, an average savings of $294 per terminal. You get 50% off training, an average, of, an average savings of $5,000 per company, and 20% off the first seven stores that signed up, which is an average of $3,200 per store. And all of that on top of the 40 client license savings you get when you use Wevio store. If you were ever going to consider upgrading your software to PIMS, now is the time. Set up with the link in the chat and we can get started. But that's not all. Because I hate the fact that the new guys always get the best deals, I want to talk to all of you who already purchased PIMS from us. If in the next 30 days you decide you want to add Wevio Store to the PIMS licenses we already sold to you, you also get Wevio Store at that same 50% discount for the first year. And we'll convert all of your, all or any of your existing PIMS client licenses so that you can use them on both Wevio Store and 4D terminals, a savings of $300 a year per license. And 
if you're ready to add another location, we'll extend that same 20% discount off of both your PIMS and 4D licenses. I realize we just threw a bunch of numbers at you, so schedule a call with us so that we can discuss your specific situation and maximize your savings from these great offers. We are confident that WeVO Store will help you turn even the newest employee into a confident and profitable one. Okay, uh, we're going to take some more Q&A a time if, you, if, uh, if there are any other questions. If you have to go, we thank you for joining us today. Uh, make sure you schedule a call with us so that we can get you started or feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions. All right. All right, thanks for that. Okay, so we've got a couple questions here. Um, Eric would like to know um, basically how involved would a migration from Lightspeed POS to this system be? Okay, we've done a ton of um, Lightspeed conversions. Uh, we've got an automated process set up. Uh, basically, we've, we've done it two different ways. One, uh, we, we bring over all of your customer and inventory, uh, vendor uh, records, um, some people want to uh, keep all of their history in a, a legacy light speed uh, terminal, which is fine. Or we can bring over all of your transactional data, your orders, your SROs, that kind of thing. Uh, we do uh, all of that for you, so you don't have to um, you don't have to worry about all of the data conversion because uh, it's it's a pain. But <laughs> we've done it for a long time, and we're good at it. Um, great. Uh, Terry wants to know, uh, how many PIMS licenses does WeVO Store use? Uh, one PIMS license per store terminal. So if you've got three uh, point of sale um, terminals up front, it takes three uh, PIMS licenses. So a follow-up question with that. Um, it would be, does every user in the company need a, a PIM, a Webio store license? Nope, it's a, it's a per terminal and it's concurrent connection, just like uh, the PIMS licenses. So, um, you know, if you've got 10 employees, but only three uh, front of house terminals, then you only need three licenses. Great. Um, uh, Terry also got a question here. Is there a quote unquote uh, conversion for existing PIMS license to Webio store or tell me what that looks like? Yeah, so um, like I said, for, for those of you that purchased PIMS from us and want to use store, we will convert your um, existing PIMS licenses um, so that you can use them either as a PIMS client with a 4D license or as a Wevio store um, license. So I mean, the answer is yes, the, that conversion is possible. Great, so let me kind of say something there and, and tell me if I'm, if I'm tracking here uh, with you, Terry, just, just give me a thumbs up or something. Um, basically, uh, if you want to add a front of house employee and dedicate that to Webio store and, and keep more back of house employees, then you would need an additional PIMS license. But if you wanna use your PIMS license that you already have for your front of house terminal, then we would convert that for you. Would you say that's accurate, Joel? Yeah, for those people that bought PIMS from us, we will do that conversion. If, if you, know, you got PIMS some other way, then you would have to buy a PIMS license for store. Great. Okay. Um, oh, and Dan here wants to know, uh, can this run on an iPad? So the answer is, wouldn't that be great? And I'm gonna let Chris answer that question. So, yes. I mean, it does work on an iPad. Um, the only thing that currently doesn't work on the iPad uh, is taking payment. Um, but as far as checking somebody in from the queue 
building an SRO, managing your queue, that does work from an iPad. It's just that um, due to some security restrictions from uh, Cayenne, uh, it doesn't work on iPad. Um, we are working on that and we plan to add that down the road. Um, but right now we can't do any payments on iPad uh, until Cayenne kind of, they just have to make a change on their end. But once, once they get that rolled out, we, we'll be able to do that. Great. Um, okay, so Dan wants to know, so since I purchased PIMS somewhere else, um, he wants to know, would he need to buy additional PIMS license to use store? Yeah, so the PIMS client license, you need to get uh, the 4D licenses, you would not need to get. Great. And uh, Josh wants to know, is there any sort of module that allows for recurring subscriptions? I don't understand the question. Um, well, I'm going to assume, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm going to assume what he's asking, um, can we take reoccurring subscriptions for customers? So like if we want to sell recurring subscription to customers, can we do that through WeVia Store? So the uh, the answer if we sell the membership, it's not going to auto bill them every month. Yeah, PIMS supports that. Uh, you wouldn't need to do that through your uh, through Wevio Store. Keep in mind that Store is really designed for that front of house experience. But once you get um, once you get sales into Store, then um, then all of the uh, all of the function and, uh, that you have with, with PIMS, you have available to you on a PIMS client. Great. All right. Uh, Dan wants to, a little more explanation regarding uh, different licensing. Uh, Joel, you wanna read that? Yeah, so um, Dan, I'll be happy to talk with you about that offline. The, the bottom line uh, is that um, in order to satisfy requirements that Executron uh, had for us to, to give us basically permission to, to provide front of house uh, terminals instead of using PIMS client licenses uh, was that a client license was required, a PIMS client license was required in order to use store. But yeah, I'll get, uh, we can talk later about that, Dan. All right, great. I'm gonna drop that uh, link there again. Um, and uh, so anyone who wants to kind of go uh, uh, deeper in there that can explain. Uh, basically that link is gonna set you up to schedule a call with us and that way we can sync up without having to do the multiple email back and forth on when's a good time. Uh, you'll just schedule right when you call, we'll set that call up for you and kind of go on next steps to uh, get you guys up and running. Um, so Joel, Chris, you got anything else? Hey, thanks guys for taking the time. I know we're all busy and I really appreciate it. I think we've put together a really good product that will uh, help your stores out and I love to, um, Love to talk with you about uh, how we can make that happen. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.